Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We hope you're all safe and well. Before we start our webinar, we feel it's important to acknowledge what we're going through this moment. It's a moment, um, sorry, through a moment of pain right now with grief, protests, anger, chaos and criminality all clashing. Although we are Swiss and continuously try to educate ourselves on this matter, we may never completely understand the complexities. However, we remain hopeful that things will get better on all aspects and that today we can bring some positive vibes to you with our webinar. While many states and provinces have reopened, we're still on home office here in New York City. I'm sure you're all eager to soon make travel plans again, be it personally or professionally, so we'd like to update you on the current situation in Switzerland. Switzerland has completed its three-stage phase reopening within the country. In addition, the borders to Germany, France, Austria and Liechtenstein open on June 15th. The borders between Switzerland and Italy remain closed. As far as travels from North America to Switzerland, there are no news as to when the travel restrictions will be lifted. Within Switzerland, events of up to 300 packs are also allowed as of June 6th, and on June 26th, they will decide if that group size will be increased. Lastly, the leading Swiss tourism associations have launched a clean and safe label, which shows any guests that they are visiting an establishment that has made a conscious commitment to adhere to a protection protocol. More details can be checked on the website you see on this slide, which is being updated regularly. Today, we are super excited to have Davos and its region as our guest destination. It is also our first joint webinar. At the Swiss CVB, we always like to keep you up to date on what's happening in Switzerland. So we'll start with some general information and news before Marika from the Davos Convention Bureau will give you her insider tips. And as always, please use the chat box on the right hand side to ask any questions you may have and we'll answer them at the end. We will also send you the recording and PDF of this webinar by tomorrow. For now, let me introduce our CVB North America team. We have Natalie and myself, Caroline, currently working from our homes here in New York City, and Isabel is working from Switzerland right now. <laughs> Surely by now we have all become experts on the various communications tools and participate in daily calls, Zoom conversations, happy hours, and for the more active ones, some dance and fitness classes, or even cooking classes. And who has not played with your background yet? Well, if any of you would like to pretend you're in Switzerland, we'd be happy to share a, a selection of our favorite background pictures with you. Just send us a message in the chat box and we'll be happy to send you the instructions after this webinar. So we are thrilled to see so many familiar names on today's participants list. With some of you, we have regular contact, with some we have worked in the past, some have future groups happening. And for those of you who are not familiar with our services, let me quickly tell you what we can do for you. We are basically your one-stop shop and are here to assist with any questions you might have regarding planning a future event in Switzerland. Whether it's just a quick question, or assistance throughout the entire RFP process, we are here for you. Now to start off, not all of you may be aware of how Switzerland actually is. In fact, all of Switzerland's population could fit into New York City. And we will now illustrate the geographical size difference so you can see just how tiny our country is and what that means for your group in terms of diversity. So Switzerland fits 241 times into Canada or 338 times into the US. If we look at the state of New York, where we are, Switzerland fits three times into that. So you can only imagine how short the distances really are. 
And as we have listeners from all over North America with us today, we're wondering, do you want to know how many times Switzerland could fit into your state or province? If you feel like working it out, please do so and share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. So now that you know how, how small Switzerland is, we'd like to take you on a virtual trip to Switzerland today and invite you to sit back, relax, and let us inspire you what Switzerland has to offer for your future groups. I personally love this picture, which, is, which was taken near Montreux, uh, Montreux Lausanne region, and would give a lot for a glass of Swiss wine right now. In case you did not know, Swiss wine is one of Switzerland's best kept secret, and while it does not get exported a lot, I do hope that we can share a glass in the future, wherever that may be. In fact, if you happen to fly in Swiss to Switzerland, it may be your first opportunity to taste it as they serve it on board. Switzerland is only an eight-hour flight from the east coast of North America to Switzerland. While there have been excellent connections to Switzerland so far, we can only hope that this will continue to be the case once the airline industry recovers from this situation in order to meet your future group requests. For now, our national airline Swiss resumes around 30% of their original services this month. And for more information and safety regulations, you can visit their homepage, which they update regularly. And once you do land in Switzerland, it's really easy to get around. From both airports, as you can see here, Zurich and Geneva, it's less than a 10 minute train ride to the city center. And every city, town or village, however small it may be, can be reached with our public transportation system, which is very reliable and at a high standard. For example, it's quick to travel from the, from the German, French or Italian part of Switzerland to any of the neighboring countries by train, car or coach, and all that in one day. It's not only comfortable to get around, but also allows you to relax and enjoy the breathtaking views while getting from A to B. For example, you can use the journey and serve lunch on the train while en route to your next destination. So why not make the transfer part of your program. And now Natalie will give you even more reasons for you to consider Switzerland. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, so let's talk about some more reasons why Switzerland should be on top of your mind once you actually start planning again for your upcoming meetings, incentives or conferences. Um, so as you may know, our beautiful Swiss plus in our flag um, has a lot of different factors that go into it. So one of the many Swiss pluses is how easily accessible everything is, like Caroline already said, with the transportation. And the distances are so short, so you can really pack so many experiences in, in only a few days. Furthermore, while we speak four official languages, English is kind of like our fifth unofficial one, so it's easy to get around as well. And we also have the lowest VAT in Europe, as well as a fairly stable currency with the Swiss franc, which is increasingly important these days. Um, and the Swiss plus is not only in our flag, it's also in the added value. The price you get in a quote is the actual final price. There is no additional tax or gratuity added besides the very low city tax. We also don't have any resort fees or any of that plus plus that you're used to from North America. So when you see a price, that's really the final amount. And you even have breakfast included in most hotels, as well as a free transportation card or other reductions in many destinations, such as Davos, for example. Switzerland also offers a wealth of different sites and activities. As you see from just this picture alone, which is in the Italian speaking part of the country, you can be surrounded by snow-capped mountains while enjoying a glass of Swiss wine amidst the palm trees on the lake shore. It really is like Europe in a nutshell. And now that we've made our way over to the southeastern part of the country, um, we, ha we have here the beautiful Val Mustair, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, one of our 12, which is in the Engadin. So that's actually not too far from Davos and is a perfect example of our beautiful untouched nature. And in, in an environment like this, being innovative is inevitable. 
In fact, our destinations are specialized in some industries such as life sciences, education and sustainability. And in this overview, you can see the main ones across the country, but there are obviously many, many, many more. And talking about Swiss innovation, today we'd like to feature Davos in our inventions slide. So you may have seen this type of sled before maybe, but did you know that it is actually called the Davos sled and dates back all the way to 1865? It is a staple in many Swiss households, especially in the mountain regions, but it is safely stowed away now as the summer has already begun. If you are not an extreme movie buff, you may be wondering who this person next to the sled is. Well, if you're familiar with the James Bond movie Quantum Solace or World War Z, or maybe rather Finding Neverland or The Kite Runner, well, this person here is Mark For Forster, and he was actually the director of all of these movies. And while he is originally German, he actually grew up in Davos before attending film school here in New York. So you can see there is quite some innovation and inventions and creations coming from Switzerland. Now, talking about Davos, I've been living here in New York myself for a few years and only just last fall, I finally had the pleasure of revisiting Davos for the first time since being a kid. I was attending Switzerland Travel Mart in Lucerne with a handful of clients from the US and we organized a pre-tour um, to Davos for about 30 meeting and incentive planners from all over the world. While we only had 24 hours in the beautiful Alpine city, Marika, who is going to speak shortly, actually did a wonderful job of putting together a great program for us, including a scavenger hunt, a few site inspections and a lot of amazing food. As a Swiss person, I obviously loved the short hike that we did during the scavenger hunt. However, my highlight was definitely the horse carriage ride from our hotel to the conference center, which you can see here on the picture as well. Who knew that it was possible to do this without snow on the ground? I certainly have never done it before. Um, so I hope that I got you into the Davos mood. But before handing over to Marika and dive into Davos, uh, Isabel will give you a few updates on our hotels in Switzerland. Thank you very much, Natalie. As Caroline already mentioned, the current situation in Switzerland at the beginning, many hotels in Switzerland are now open again. However, as you might be working on rebooking events or also looking further ahead with events, you might still experience lower response times from the local CVBs or salespeople of the hotels. So if this should be the case, don't hesitate to reach out to us as we are in close contact with them and can always help you there. Now I would like to share with you two major news from the hotel industry in Switzerland. First of all, in Basel, they are currently building a new Mövenpick five-star hotel, which is located a few minutes away from the train station and right in the city center of Basel, where the old Hilton used to be. It has 264 rooms, meeting and event space for up to 600 people with a ballroom, a conference hall, and 17 meeting rooms. The hotel offers super modern comfort, a restaurant, a fitness and wellness center, as well as spectacular views of the city. The Mövenpick Hotel was supposed to open in spring 2020, but has recently postponed the opening to fall 2020. And a specific date has not been announced yet. Traveling from Basel to the Zurich area, you might have heard of this project already. At Zurich Airport, they are currently building the Circle, which includes a convention center and two hotels, as well as many more businesses and shops located right by the airport. The main convention hall of the convention center offers space for up to 1,500 guests seated in theater style. The two hotels are both managed by Hyatt. They are called the Hyatt Regency and Hyatt Place, and they offer a total of 550 rooms, which make them combined the largest hotel in Switzerland. Due to COVID-19, the construction work has slowed down, which is why the opening of the circle is currently postponed to November 2020. This applies to the convention center as well as the Hyatt Regency. The Hyatt Place is scheduled to open in December 2020, as planned, and, but we will keep you posted if uh, anything should change. 
So that was it from my side. I happily hand back to Caroline now. Thank you, Isabel. And before we continue, let me show you again on the map where we are traveling to now. This gives me the opportunity to introduce you to Marika, who's the head of the business sales at the Davos Convention Bureau based in Davos. Hello, everybody from Switzerland. <clears throat> First of all, let me tell you, my heart is with you. After seeing all these devastating pictures um, the last few days, I was indeed in New York just uh, end of February, beginning of March, and, and it breaks my heart to see what's happening. Anyway, <clears throat> um, some of you I know have already been to Davos, and I see that uh, some of the attendees even spent some vacation in Davos, so they know everything about it. For all the other ones, um, I think you might know the destination from um, from the World Economic Forum. So I guess you heard about the World Economic Forum, which takes place since 50 years in our destination, actually in the Congress Hall, which you see on this slide. And um, I'm very happy to answer you some questions about it, but I want to tell you a little bit about the place. So who are we? Um, we have a specific role because in, in one person we represent the Convention Bureau, but we are also representing the Congress Center. So it's myself and Sabrina in home office, as most of you. <clears throat> Obviously, we offer you all the services which you can expect from a Convention Bureau. Specifically, um, you will get an offer from us in 24 hours for all your direct bookings. And we support you with any questions, any wishes, any needs you have. Um, talking about Davos, how far away are we from the next airport? So the next airport is indeed Zurich Airport, which you heard about already. Um, it's 96 miles. Um, uh, distance and basically either two hours by car or two hours 50 by train to reach us. <clears throat> the destination consists actually of a little village and a town. So first thing you will reach if you come from the airport is the village Closters, which has not even 4,000 people living there. And as you can see, it's the romantic mountain-type village with a lot of chalets. You take a small drive of 15 minutes and you reach Davos, which is the destination I'm sure you heard about, um, which has nearly 12,000 people living there and is officially a town. Completely different to Closters. It's more modern, it's a city. Um, so you have the choice of two different lifestyles, romantic mountain village or city type. What the two destinations do, they share the resort together. So basically, since we are up in the mountains, you will find kind of like three seasons. Our winter season is from mid-November till mid-April. Summer season is June till mid-October, and the in-between season would, would be mid-April to end of May, or mid-October to mid-November. Saying that, because it's a city, it's never dead. So you always have people around, you always have things which are open. What can you do typically in a, in a summer destination? Obviously, it's all about mountains. So we are a very sporty, active destination where you can spend a lot of time biking, hiking, uh, golfing. We have uh, one of the most um, one of the most biking trails in in our region. Then what can you do in winter time? Obviously, skiing and cross country, everything around snow. Um, again, within Switzerland, we are one of the biggest ski resorts um, with five different mountains, which offer you around over 300 kilometers of slopes. As I mentioned, we have five mountains, so this gives you a little impression. Um, sorry, the kilometers are roughly 186 miles. 
and the trails we have are nearly 500 miles we offer you. Again, on five mountains, very easy to reach from Davos and from Closes. Um, hotels. Obviously, in Davos, we have um, more hotels than Closes because we are a little bit bigger. This gives you the breakdown and we have all categories. Um, the the so-called golden eye you see on this slide, by the way, this is an intercontinental and it's really famous under the name GoldenEye. Um, <clears throat> Closes is a little bit smaller and as you can see on this slide, it's, it's really the romantic mountain village with chalet type of hotels, again, in all kinds of categories. In addition to that, what we do is Convention Bureau, we are representing 16 seminar hotels within Davos and Closters. They are all specialized in, in uh, meetings and seminars, um, and we are very happy to make you an offer for all of them if you have a request or to help you who to choose. Now, if we talk about the distances, um, you've seen how small Switzerland indeed is. So if we talk about the Vos, this red thing on the map is the Congress Center. And basically, all hotels in Davos are in walking distance from the Congress Center. Saying that, that's exactly what's happening during the World Economic Forum. So you see all the top shots, all the leaders, instead of sitting in their limousines, in fact, walking to the Congress Center and having very nice meetings during their walk. <clears throat> This is how the Congress Center looks like from the outside. Basically, we can uh, have it a total of 5,000 people. Uh, it's three independent buildings which can be run independently. The biggest room has a capacity of 1,800 people. Um, saying that, that's not with the current uh, COVID-19 measurements. Obviously, then it's a little bit less, as you can imagine. And I'm very proud to announce that since 1st of June, we are the first climate neutral Congress Center in Switzerland. We work together with an organization called My Climate, and we support um, having clean water in Africa. The whole destination is already uh, climate neutral since last October, but we are really the first Congress Center. So in case you plan a Congress, you can have it climate neutral with us as of two days ago. I just want to give you briefly some impressions about the Congress Center. Um, this picture, by the way, is the famous hall where all the main speeches uh, during the World Economic Forum are held, and this is also the biggest hall. As you can see, it's it's quite blank canvas, so you can decorate it to your and your client's taste. Nearly all of the rooms have daylights. And this is just really briefly to give you some impressions on the different Congress wings. Uh, you will have in the presentation the exact capacities in case you need those. Again, this is the famous hall which um, where all the big meetings are during the World Economic Forum. So what can we offer you as Congress organizers? Basically, uh, we can act as your PCO and can support you with all your requests on site. We have other venues in the destination in case you need to spread out with your request or you want to do something else. There is the enclosures, there's an arena with uh, over 23,000 square feet, or just next door to the Congress Center, there is a huge hall from our local ice hockey club, which can nicely be transformed to an event location with 27,000 square feet. <clears throat> As you can imagine, our specialities are economics, but we are also very strong in uh, pharmaceutical and medi medication. 
specifically from the history of Davos, which originally was um, a place where people came uh, around 1895 to treat tuberculosis. Out of that, we received a lot of um, research institutes in the destination. So we are since 1895 also professional with pharmaceutical or medical questions. One other thing we can offer you, we have uh, a department which acts like a local DMC. So we can help you with all your requests regarding um, site programs, social programs, excursions, transfers, and so on. Just some ideas for unusual location. Obviously, only in wintertime available is our igloo village on one of the mountains. Um, this is also accessible for non-skiers, so very easy to know that. By the way, you can also have an overnight here, but you can also have meetings, lunches, or dinners. Another unusual location is actually placed in the Hard Rock Hotel in Davos. Um, this is a chapel and you can rent it for your event. Third unusual location is a treehouse. So this is very private for very small VIP groups and you can have even overnights in the treehouse or just have cocktails or events here. Another one on the mountains, obviously, Madrisa Hof. It's beautiful for larger groups, for, for gala dinners and events. Very easy to be accessed um, with the gondola, also accessible for non-skiers. Can be rented out in the evenings and during the days. Excursions, we have the highest brewery of Europe. So you could, for instance, go to, to our famous Monstein Brewery for a local beer or I'm sure you know this picture from the Switzerland presentations this is a UNESCO World Heritage Bridge and there is a historic train which you can privatize if you wish or do something crazy in the winter time like driving a fat bike. Uh, Natalie mentioned the horse carriage ride so obviously that can be done in summertime and in winter time so why should you come to the most closest? Obviously, world leaders meet in our destination since 50 years. Due to the size of the destination, you will never lose your delegates because it's all in walking distance. And even if they try to sneak out, you will find them again. We have extremely high quality of all the facilities. Um, as you can imagine, all, everybody in the destination is used to serve kings and queens and head of states. And you will have unlimited sports experiences. Follow us on, on social media for the latest news. And we are very, very much looking forward to uh, hear from you or to answer any of your questions and wishes. Thank you so much, Marika, for giving us all this very, very useful information and also insider tips. I think my, my favorite one that you were showing was, uh, I can totally see having a little VIP event in, in that treehouse that you were showing. I, I love that. And uh, also congratulations to the Climate Neutral Congress Center. Super exciting news. And Switzerland in general is a very, very sustainable destination. And you will hear us talking about that more and more in the upcoming webinars too. So now we would um, like to show you that we also have white animals. And these ones are actually home to the eastern part of, the, of Switzerland where Davos is. And as you can see, they are very, very photogenic. And did you actually know that the alpine ibex tend to live in a steep, rough terrain near the snow line? And they are also very social, although, ad although the adult males and females segregate for most of the year and they only come together to mate. I thought that was quite interesting. <laughs> And um, while Isabel is now checking for any questions in the chat box, 
I'm happy to share our contact details summarized. So let's stay in touch virtually until we can hopefully meet somewhere soon again in person. So, um, Isabel, have you had a chance to look if there's any questions in the chat box? Yes, I had. And actually, right now, I don't see any questions. So, but if you have any questions, like also after the webinar, you can always send us an email, of course, and we will be happy to uh, get back to you. So nothing in the chat box yet. Thank you. So yeah, we would love to hear from you. I mean, share with us how you're doing, what you're up to. Let us know how we as the Swiss CVB and also Marika in Davos as the destination, your local contact can assist you during these very uncertain times. We're all in this together, so let's try and help each other out as much as we can. And if you like today's webinar and would like to listen to more, we're happy to announce that we have a few more coming up for this year. And um, if you did not like the webinar, then we'd love to hear. And if you'd like us to cover anything else in future, again, do let us know. So before ending this webinar, we'd like to share some personal experiences. You've heard us talking a lot about food. So while both Natalie and myself are having cravings for Swiss food, such a delicious raclette, which hopefully some of you have tasted in the past. It's usually a very social gathering, but we both found a way to still enjoy it in our homes during the social distancing in New York. And Isabel is longing to come back to New York and has ventured out on a New York recipe. Those rhubarb and raspberry pies look just delicious, don't they? So should we have managed to whet your appetite and you would like? any Swiss recipes or share some of your favorite ones, we'd love to hear from you and experiment together. For now, from the Swiss CVB and on behalf of our partners, we wish you and your loved ones good health and stay safe. Thank you all for taking the time to join us today and we hope you learned something new about Switzerland and Davos and if we can be of any assistance to you, don't hesitate to reach out. We want nothing more than for this all to be over and for us to get together again and share our stories of how we got through this. For now, let's look forward to future events that we can plan together, hopefully soon. Thank you all. Please stay safe, healthy and positive. And here comes a big Swiss hug from the four of us. Bye-bye.